Paper filed in the Western Cape High Court have shed light on the internal workings of the Mkondosuze party, revealing that it is allegedly controlled by Jacob Zuma. This control was confirmed in Zuma's affidavit in response to a legal challenge by 10 MPs who were removed from the National Assembly and the party. The court's ruling, delivered on Monday, dismissed the MP's case, leaving them at risk of being evicted from their parliamentary housing in, in Cape Town. Their legal team is exploring further legal actions. The expelled MPs alleged that the MK party was run in an undemocratic manner, with Zuma wielding total control over its operations. In his response, Zuma admitted that the party was his concept and a brainchild, although this claim was disputed. He also acknowledged that the MK party was still in the second phase of evolution, where an interim leadership core was managing the party's affairs. This structure grants Zuma a sole authority to deploy members of the MK party until a formal elective conference is held. Judge Catherine Savage, who presides over the case, noted the concerning nature of Zuma's admission regarding the MK party's internal operations. However, she said that it was the responsibility of the applicants to prove that the requirement for the interim relief had been met, which they failed to do. The MPs had argued that Zuma's absolute control over the party violated their right and undermined democratic governance. They also raised concerns about chaos within the party, claiming that Zuma had no knowledge of the majority of the 800 names submitted for parliamentary candidacy. The MPs believed that their removal was intended to create space for defectors from the EFF, including Floyd Shibambu and Mzonele Mani. In their court filings, they asserted that the MK party was not fit to govern itself or provide fair administrative action to its members, particularly in light of lack of finalized constitution. Advocate Simba Chitando, who represented the MPs, expressed disappointment in the court's ruling. He added that Zuma's own admission about this control over the party demonstrated that the, the MK party was violating the constitutional right of the MPs. Despite this, the judgment did not address the legal framework for evictions, prompting Chitando to consider appealing the decision. The MPs were initially sworn into parliament on June 2nd, but by August 7th, they were informed by MK Chief Whip Silengubane that their party membership had been terminated. They were not given prior notice of this decision, and no formal procedure were followed, making their removal inconsistent with both MK's draft constitution and South Africa's constitution. Many of the MPs had left their jobs and homes to take up their parliamentary positions and found themselves in a precarious situation. On August 19, they were denied access to their parliamentary accommodations, although their lawyers managed to secure them 30 days to vacate their premises. However, instead of receiving their full salary of 102,000 rands, they were only paid 12,000 rands in mid-August. Zuma defended his removals, claiming that the MPs resigned from various reasons. According to him, two MPs were dismissed for attending the first parliamentary sitting against orders, three for missing the swearing-in ceremony, and a five for disobeying instruction to not attend the same ceremony. However, the court ruled that the MPs' case lacked the key factual evidence and that their supporting affidavits were filed too late, giving the MK party no time to respond. Additionally, they failed to challenge Zuma's affidavit, leaving significant issue unaddressed.